cannot join that startup and say that I'll build the best uh, machine learning model in the world. It's simply the data doesn't exist, the opportunity doesn't exist. Romanticize that, okay, data science uh, is this beautiful thing that is ever going to happen. Just be conscious about what you are choosing. These education institutions or these uh, institutes that are offering the data science, they hype up about uh, the quality of the data scientists that they produce. Uh, what do you think has been, how, how has the analytics industry shaped up? How, how did the pandemic impact you or your, your functioning, you know? Yeah, yeah. see, to, on a lighter note, right, so the attrition that we have seen is uh, crazy. Almost my entire team is gone, right? So we had to build everything from scratch. It's uh, the numbers that we are seeing, the kind of offers that people are getting and the startups, the crazy offer, it, it has been one hell of a ride. Yeah, and I th we are seeing a high attrition rates. Uh, we also came up with a report very recently at Analytics India magazine. And one of the things that we observed that the attrition almost doubled uh, from last year to this year. And uh, I think one of that one of the re primary reasons why this is happening, or correct me if I'm wrong, is because of unrealistic ex expectations that data scientists have. So uh, today, let's you know, let's talk about bursting some of, or let's burst some of those you know, data science career myth, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so, uh, let's let's discuss from the start, right, where where a person starts uh, into a data science career. The first thing, if one wants to move into a data science career, they're looking for something that will educate them in the field. That's, for, that's not just for data science, but anything. And there are scores of data science programs coming up, you know, there's almost like 10 to 12 different kinds of platforms which are big and like they're offering courses. Many people are opting for it, but do you really think that a formal qualification is absolutely necessary? Because when I joined, uh, so I, I was I used to work as a data scientist. When I joined uh, uh, to uh, I joined my first job as a data scientist, I I graduated as a computer engineer, and I I had no formal education, but still I could carry out my role. But why is there like sudden flux of so many courses, and is it absolutely necessary to kind of? Yeah, graduate. So that I think that's a that's a great question. In fact, uh, even I did not have a formal education to start with. Right. In fact, uh, I don't think anyone who started during that time had a formal education. So, see, the way I have always looked at data science is uh, there are multiple paths towards becoming a data science uh, data scientist. One, of course, is uh, taking a formal course, but that is not the only course. Uh, that is not the only option. So, if uh, if you are already doing something, you could do it on the job. You could pick up pick it up on the job. Or uh, you know you could learn out of your self-interest. Uh, there's multiple multiple paths. Or you could become a, you could be a software engineer already who is good at programming. Maybe you just want to learn uh, the other aspects of analyzing data and become right. So it's uh, you know if if someone is doing a, uh, a data science uh, program from a reputed college, right? So at least my mental model is that they may have a slight advantage or a you know a slight uh, they're starting. Uh, a bit ahead of the others because of you know the college and the offers that they are getting uh, but this is only for the top institutes that we are talking about right so if as long as uh, anyone realizes that you know the advantage that someone else has and works consciously to fill that gap i think that is more critical than whether a formal course is important or uh, you know how how you become a data scientist right it's it's important to have that uh, awareness yeah and I think going forward as well it will be the same right because the field is evolving so fast it is not like one formal set of courses done on one online platform will suffice once you start working there as well things are changing so fast that you will have to as well uh, even even in within six seven months they will have to learn new things and keep going yeah, yeah absolutely I mean not even talking about things that are changing or that are going to change even uh, the courses that uh, you know some of the courses right may not be majority of the courses uh, some of the courses are uh, that they offer a picture a very idealistic scenario for a data scientist that my data is so clean my problem statements are so very well defined and i build a model i expect 90 95 percent accuracy so whatever uh, ask for number whatever right so they paint a very idealistic uh, scenario so that you know that that simply isn't the case yeah. uh, so i know that's one reality that everyone uh, this is nothing spe uh, special with uh, data science usually that there's always that gap between academia versus real world but I see that uh, you know, the gap uh, even bigger in the data science field, right? So it is just purely theoretical, purely coding focused, or purely you know, just for the sake of it. Yeah. 
yeah you talk you you said uh, they are coding focused right and this is something that i have always uh, so in the recent past i've 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 read a few articles as well as like some of the areas i've seen people say that coding is not so uh, mandatory for this thing but recently we did a skills survey uh, you know uh, and we found out that 9 out of 10 people they are saying that coding is absolutely a must what is your take on it like is is coding a must or you, can you make a data science career without being able to code yeah yeah so uh, i think uh, before i answer that i don't i don't want to generalize that right so now uh coding is definitely a must for let's say if you're a software engineer right so and the level of coding skills are uh, required are uh, uh, very high and the same with probably with data engineering uh, because these are two technical roles where you know these are very extremely hard technical problems that someone is trying to solve uh, so that requires deep uh, technical knowledge be it programming or something else whereas when it comes to data science right so coding is one part of it yes an important part but it is only one piece of probably three or four other things that are required to be a good data scientist end of the day i see data scientist has to add value to business right and if you want to add if someone wants to add value to business there are four or five things needs to come together and coding is one of one of them so coding helps definitely right so it's uh, rather than generalizing it right let's take two scenarios if if you want to uh, you know build a model uh, and if you want to optimize a model let's say if you want to reduce the model training time or uh, if you want to make the model more efficient or run on less hardware right so these are uh, deep, these this uh, such tasks require definitely deep coding skills but that is probably a little advanced uh, stage what is happening in the industry because this is one of the most uh, dynamic industries innovation is like every day there's a new stuff uh, that's happening so what what has happened in the last 5 uh, years or 10 years or so right? especially in the last 4 to 5 years is lot of companies are offering uh, the ability to do data science without uh, deep programming knowledge so for example uh, nowadays all the major cloud providers uh, right so usually we we think python or r synonymous with uh, data science but almost all uh, cloud providers today offer uh, the ability to the, create a model just using sql of course it is still programming but not as uh, you know as not as complex as let's say python or something so that that is definitely you know the bar is uh, reducing yeah wh- while while i do definitely agree that there is not a definite answer but you know you are saying that there are these tools that are being made available which let's say allow you to uh, not code but you know slice and dice data and you know even build models yeah. but yeah, aren't they saying that even these kind of things are dangerous because like you are building a model without actually having the knowledge of statistics right and then this no code low code or like you know yeah. auto ml kind of tools that are coming up and these kind of build models for you they make predictions but you're forget explainability of a model in terms of like technical technically explaining model right it, at least you should have the basic knowledge of statistics of coding before you actually code right exactly exactly i think uh, so the to the previous point that we were discussing right what does it take to be a good data scientist which is uh, i said that coding is one aspect but there are four or five other aspects that is more critical i would say that uh, you know uh, being analytical first of all right so having that analytical mindset the critical thinking mindset the curiosity to ask the right questions that is definitely uh, important a uh, second is uh, Uh, you know end of the day i'm just reiterating the point that data scientist is solving a business problem so having a deep understanding of the business problem itself uh, right so this this i believe is uh, even more uh, critical so then of course uh, the knowledge of uh, basic stats uh, ob- uh, it's uh, necessary uh, absolutely mandatory right so the uh, and if you combine all of that right so so what these platforms help us do is just uh, help you build a model without actually coding it but all the other skills are definitely uh, i would say in this context are actually more important if you're good at everything else right so if you if you can think critically if you understand the business problem well and if you have your basic uh, knowledge about on data science itself right so on how do you look at a model how do you evaluate a model how do you benchmark a model and then how do you look at you know whether uh, when when the model performs degrades the concepts wise if you are uh, quite clear 
and the coding itself there are many tools that can uh, substitute but of course that said right so let's say this is uh, you know the horses for courses we cannot generalize it right so i cannot generalize by saying that you can be a good data scientist without knowing coding but there are uh, roles within data science there will be roles within data science that requires uh, you know definitely a good programming language but you don't need it to become a good data scientist if you want to be excellent or if you want to be top notch yeah I, I think i agree i agree uh, on your point but let me rephrase the question and ask you it in a different way right is it safe uh, for the data science industry or the ecosystem to cre- create a narrative where they encourage people without statistics or coding knowledge to make a career in data science is that safe uh i don't think so because uh, see without coding knowledge one could be a data scientist but without uh, you know the data science concept the having the knowledge of data science concepts without understanding the problem that you are solving right it, it's very hard for me to think how can anyone become a good data scientist right so without uh, the essence of uh, uh, without understanding the fundamentals of data science programming is just one piece and it's natural evolution also right so because uh, uh, year over year these companies invest in abstracting the complexities of programming and it becomes easier and easier but that doesn't mean that uh, you know you cannot or you should there is no need to learn uh, the fundamentals of data science correct okay, okay. so the fundamentals of data science then is like one aspect and probably that is absolutely crucial uh, but you talked about certain roles that probably don't require as much hard coding knowledge right uh, this which which brings me to kind of the wide array of roles that are available right and uh, many people think that data scientist or data analyst is just one thing uh, but there are so many different roles right and then y- y- how do you choose uh, which role do you want to or do you get to choose when you say we are start starting a career in this data domain get to choose uh, i'm not sure uh, because it i think it depends on multiple factors the company that you are joining and this you know the uh, the type of background that you have but you know let's talk about the different types of roles right and because this field is also evolving uh see as of now as you rightly said the emphasis is on the core model building right so uh, but there is somehow the misconception that if i develop a machine learn uh, uh, only if i develop a machine learning model then i'll i'm a data scientist or i'm in this analytics field right but of course there are uh, translators uh, from a business perspective who translate the business problem into an analytics problem statement right end of the day it, that is probably one of the most uh, critical uh, critical jobs because if you don't translate it well no matter how great your model is going to be it is not going to solve the business problem so the translator role is extremely important and this is very tricky because you need to understand the business side of it and also you need to appreciate and have an understanding of the data science side of it and data engineering we all know and within data engineering also of course uh, it's a broad term that we use there are nuances within data engineering that uh, you know probably topic for another day but lastly right so one thing uh, you know one of the emerging fields uh few companies are already facing this issue this is where mlops uh, comes into picture right so once you deploy hundreds of models uh, at your company someone has to actively look at uh, those models look for uh, you know whether the model performance is degrading and then retrain these models right the entire mlops so you know this is uh, if i if i were to compare this with the traditional software industry after you dip, uh, after you develop an app or a website someone has to maintain that right? some of the production support or whatever it is that field i see uh, you know uh, will uh, the size of that uh, ml ops will uh, is definitely going to increase as co- more and more companies are going to deploy more and more models correct correct so <clears throat> there are there are wide array of roles yeah. right uh, and you can probably choose uh, different roles and different skill sets are needed for uh, different kinds of things uh, but when it comes to the traditional Uh, role of a data science right uh, which uh, which hbr called probably the sexiest job of 21st century and when i when i actually started working as a data scientist before i didn't really feel that it was that sexy and <laughs> there are several uh, there are several reasons to it uh, one is that there is a lot of hustle yeah at the start and i think it's with any career but especially with data science there's a lot of grunt work what do you have to advise uh, to those people who have read that probably they are getting into the sexiest job of 21st century and what to expect and how to like kind of flourish like, like not flourish but like get into their 
careers yeah yeah i, I really hope uh, most people ha- have passed that stage but for those who have been right at least uh, you know the uh, you know the way i think about it is uh, i'm sure you know paris syndrome so which is uh, you know when uh, i think this is especially uh, uh, people grew up hearing a lot about paris right it is one of the dream destinations uh, for anyone to visit in the world so when the person who dreamt about paris the entire life and then uh, he or she suddenly goes to paris they are so disappointed with what they see right because they see uh, uh, whatever they see in the movies they see that shakespeare that this or hemingway right? so all that when the suddenly after they go to paris and they realize that you know there i think this is uh, more uh, true with the japanese and they you know the situations are as bad as that people get hospitalized also right it's an actual thing i didn't make it up so i believe data science is uh, or has been going through that phase right so that one article uh, not only that article and also uh, you know few companies who have done excellent work uh, with data science or right, so who have figured out a way to use it 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 just became romanticized that okay data science uh, is this beautiful thing that is ever going to happen only for them to come and realize after joining like you rightly said right so they would realize that 90% is just data cleaning and preparation and then just you know data wrangling and forget about data preparation i think 50% of the time is uh, you know how do you get access to the data right and where do you store the data how do you clean it and then probably the 5% is uh, explorer trainer whatever it is right that is one side of the equation but you know you know what so the same exists from the company's perspective also Okay. so as i you know the leaders of these companies of course the aspiring data scientists have also read this article and the leaders of uh, you know the fortune 100 companies or 500 companies have also read this article and they also have great expectations from data science so they when they hire data scientists they think that they are going to solve they are going to create magic for the company so the 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 expectations or the mis expectations are there on the both side right and hence it's extremely difficult i'm uh, i think uh, industry is getting better and better uh, people especially on the leadership side people are realizing that uh, you know this is uh, this is uh, we have to take a more pragmatic approach uh, right so i you know this mis alignment of expectation leads to uh, I, i just my hypothesis i don't have a, a data point here right it leads to more attrition in general in this industry Because someone joins and they say that look, this is not what I expected. I blame the company. I don't blame data science, no, because data science is sexy. So I say that okay, this company is not offering me the right role. So I'll go and find uh, a different job. Right? That's why I believe this field attrition rate in general compared to the tech is higher, but I believe data science is even higher. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned the Paris syndrome because I love Paris. I don't know yeah. <laughs> why. Have you been there? <laughs> I have actually. I I was fascinated with Eiffel Tower. I'm not someone who goes to probably. you know uh, see like big monuments or yeah, like yeah. big uh, or the seven wonders of the world that's something that i no don't yeah. travel for but i love the eiffel tower and you know which brings me to an interesting point for me no one said that paris expectation i was i never had high hopes from yeah, paris yeah, yeah. right do you think that it's 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 a responsibility of the media to be you know not hype up things uh, like it did when it you know uh, or like be careful when they are saying things about otherwise it it leads to something like attrition and attrition is a major problem right now yeah, right and yeah, it can right. create unintended consequences yes. do you think a media has a good role to play when it comes to define definitely but uh, you know uh, so to their defense right so i I'm, i'm sure that article was written with all good intentions and think about it right so i think today we could be talking about attrition and all but i believe that single article created the entire industry right See, so the, i i think so one article that one article or that could be one of the most uh, you know because until then there is no single term to because i am doing what i am doing for the last 10 15 years right so there but there's no term and i'm sure everyone uh, else have also been doing that that article gave recognition that article created the industry called data science or not created maybe consolidated the industry called uh, data science and then yeah, analytics and then maybe ai whatever it is right that is that played a significant role Uh, right so but of course see it's a it's very uh, easy for me to sit here five or six years later to come and that no that could have been written a better way i would not do that but i think taking the positive from it i i i believe that at least uh, right so my belief is that 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 played a uh, 
that was positive yeah yeah i think no i i agree it it definitely has to play a role and i think that i'm just saying that probably it needs to be more responsible and you know I'll responsible you uh, sorry sorry to cut you off where i believe right so uh, media definitely has a role to play but i believe to your earlier question right so uh, do people have to take a formal course these education institutions or these uh, institutes that are offering the data science they hype up about uh, the quality of the data scientists that they produce when they uh, you know when they come and the sell uh, right so i would do the same i'm not right so that's a business model i believe that if we tone down a little bit right so people are realizing it uh, but of course there if we can match expectations a little bit right so yeah. that we are not giving you rocket scientists these are good data scientists data analysts they'll help you uh, right eventually so this but there's essentially there's a lot to do with the language uh, that is being yeah, used to exactly. kind of set expectations and which is why we are having this podcast uh, you know uh, another example in this area itself right so for instance we were i think we were talking this on the em leaders council group right the expectation between data science and engineering sciences were always about research right and engineering were about applications but especially in this field data engineering is definitely an attractive to many than data sciences and this i have heard multiple times right so here also probably language plays a very important role yeah yeah so uh, definitely so but uh, one is language and how the entire industry perceives it so but end of the day right so it i believe it's all about uh, you know the right incentives so what i have noticed in the last couple of years especially dramatically change is that data engineers are being paid same as data scientists or in sometimes higher than data scientists right that change the entire conversation around what is more important right so earlier if they were treated as a second uh, right so okay data, data science is a sexy but not data engineering but suddenly everyone realized that data science is 90% data engineering right so without that we'll never be able to build a decent model i believe that changed uh, the uh, in the last couple of years uh, at least that is changing and i hope that it changes uh, also right so because that's a very critical uh, part which which brings me to the to my next question and you know going forward the roles that will be the roles that will evolve and the roles that will play an important role in the data data industry right uh, many what as and you also mentioned before that you know today it's all about modeling and this thing and probably you know uh so while we are also observing we also saw that data engineers are commanding more salaries than data scientists and that is a fact today in 2022 that is mm-hmm. this thing in the longer run though do you think these processes will get automated and data engineers will become obsolete or will that be uh, an ever evolving role as well a, da- a data engineer's job and Uh, to uh, to add to that what what does the future of data science rules looks like there's a lot of unpredictability and we just want to kind of clarify like what 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 is your prediction right right so i think that's a great question i'll not predict anything it will be foolish of me to predict uh, anything <laughs> but uh, you know let me mm, again you know draw parallels to the software industry right so because that has been there for the last uh, uh, you know many many decades and it has seen multiple cycles with newer technologies right so to simply answer your question will either a data scientist or a data engineer or uh, any one uh, any of those roles becomes obsolete i don't think so simply because uh, you know believe it or not there are still companies paying for mainframe engineers all right so mainframe i i don't even know what it looks like i don't even know i think those big room full of computers right so that you code only on black and white screens and it's not coding as in like uh, it's not uh, you know very user friendly according uh, so companies are still investing millions of dollars in hiring and retaining talent around the mainframe so what will happen right if again drawing parallel to what happened in the same industry is that the shape of the pie changes so today we might be seeing a large portion concentrated uh, primarily in building machine learning models but over a period of time people realize that yes this is not the only thing if we truly want to become a data centric company or if we truly want to make uh, analytics as a way of life at uh, the company right so companies 
we'll slowly start realizing that okay data engineers are extremely important and within data engineers also again to my previous comment horses for courses right so there are low end jobs where you might need to hire uh, certain people and there are high end really tricky jobs where you need to find hire certain kind of people and on the uh, data science side also there is core model development but ml ops i believe uh, you know the size of ml ops as an industry will uh, only increase because in the next 5 years companies are definitely going to figure out uh, how to make uh, the models work Uh, if companies haven't already and which only means that hundreds and hundreds of models will get deployed which means that someone has to maintain them right so they 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 cannot maintain them just automatically so i believe the you know to short answer i i doubt uh, any of these ro- roles will become obsolete but you know the proportion changes yeah. right so going forward yeah. yeah change is the only constant so yeah, yeah yeah so probably on some closing remarks like so what what we we try to address some of the myths or some of the misconceptions that a day to day's aspiring data scientist may have any final uh, piece of advice that you would like to give them when choosing a data science career so i would uh, you know i would just uh, expand upon one of the initial comments i made just be conscious about what you are choosing so for example one of the most basic things that i see uh, uh, these uh, especially freshers or someone who has completed the course right are you if you are going to work for a startup right i'm just giving an analogy uh, so if you're going to work for a consumer startup by definition right so you will not have data unless you will have unless you uh, uh, accumulate millions of customers and they start making millions of transactions if you start if you uh, if you join an early stage startup that is still in hundreds of customers and they're still trying to figure out what data science can you expect to do there it is impossible right so that means you're not thinking clearly uh, so you cannot Exp- you cannot join that startup and say that I'll build the best uh, machine learning model in the world. It's simply the data doesn't exist, the opportunity doesn't exist. On the other side, right? So where uh, the data is plenty is especially at these large uh, conglomerates and enterprises because they have been accumulating and collecting data for multiple years. But there, of course, there are challenges related to bureaucracy and uh, all the uh, you know typical challenges at the large enterprise. So. nothing is right or wrong at least be clear uh, uh, for if you can think for yourself and be clear on what role you are choosing i believe the expectations of both uh, on the leadership side and also the data scientists if we if that gets toned down a little bit and everyone is uh, you know i hope that everyone gets more clear on what they are signing up for okay on that great piece of advice i think thank you so much uh, for coming purnesh i think it was a great conversation thank you kashyap it was uh, great uh, thank you for having me